Applying for social security disability due to Sjogren's is an arduous task. Thanks to advocacy by the Sjogren's Foundation 10 years ago, the Social Security Administration added a listing of impairments specific for Sjogren's to their disability guidelines. However, even with this added list, being successful at getting Social Security disability benefits can be a difficult task. We met with a disability attorney, as well as a Sjogren's patient, who was successful at obtaining these benefits. Here is what we learned. Many people think that disability can be obtained um, for very little uh, and that you don't have to be that severely uh, disabled to receive benefits from Social Security. They're just mistaken. Uh, the system requires proof and it requires medical signs and findings. The system will not respond to someone who simply says uh, my symptoms are X, Y, and Z, and they're really, really terrible. Disability is not granted simply on the basis of symptoms or what I say as the patient. It's only granted based on signs, findings, laboratory results, and so forth. Um, medical evidence is required to prove a disability case. Understanding the Social Security Disability Benefit System is important. This knowledge will help you understand the system and the benefits available. Social Security and SSI disability are the public disability programs that cover virtually everyone in the United States. Um, when you work, you're paying into the Social Security system. That covers you when you retire, but it also covers you if you become unable to work before retirement age because of disability, physical, mental, or both. To be most successful with your application, a patient should familiarize themselves with the listing of impairments for Sjogren's as outlined by the Social Security Administration. Social Security has what is called the listing of impairments that covers the most common diseases um, that we experience, both as adults and as children. There are listings for adults and for children in the Code of Federal Regulations. Until 10 years ago, there was no listing for Sjogren's specifically. But in part because the Sjogren's Foundation fought for this, there is a listing of impairments now specifically for Sjogren's. Uh, it's listing 14.10. You can Google it. Um, and essentially, if you meet the criteria of this listing, you are considered disabled as long as you are not working at a substantial gainful activity level. Social Security looks at your capacity to work on a regular and continuing basis, that is, eight hours a day, five days a week. That's the test of disability. So if you cannot do that because of your Sjogren's, or your Sjogren's in combination with other illnesses you may suffer from, then you should qualify for Social Security Disability, and that's what lawyers like me help people do. Um, so these are not easy benefits uh, to get. Uh, the claimant bears the burden of proof and has to actually prove their case in terms of inability to work. Applying for disability has many steps, and preparing the application correctly is critical so as to show the seriousness of your illness and your inability to work. So people will start an application usually when they have been out of work for a little while. Sometimes people start right away. If you're approved at the application level, you will receive benefits under the Social Security Disability Program five full calendar months after you last worked or after your onset date of disability. That's when monthly cash benefits start. You will also receive Medicare benefits. Unfortunately, those don't begin until 29 months after the onset date. So you have to actually be on Social Security Disability for two full years before you can receive Medicare. Um, so that creates a problem for lots of folks uh, with disability. How are they going to get their medical needs met? Hopefully with a spouse who has coverage or they can get something through the Affordable Care Act or they may qualify for Medicaid depending on the state and their income level. People can apply without an attorney. We do represent in my firm people from the very beginning of the process. So we help people complete their applications. There is paperwork. There is usually uh, an interview, often on the telephone, a conference call with Social mm -hmm. Security, and if my firm is involved, we're on the phone in that conference call to begin the application process. Uh, the individual has to inform Social Security of all their medical sources, everyone that treats them, all the doctors, the physical therapists, the naturopaths, the chiropractors, the psychologists, everything. 
And then Social Security has the job of going out and obtaining all the medical records on that person uh, and evaluating those records. In some cases, they can make a decision based on those records alone. In other cases, they want to get independent examinations mm. by physicians that they hire as consultants. So our clients are sent to consultative examinations, one-time examinations. The Social Security Disability Application Process can be an exhaustive experience. However, the more information you have documented on your disease over the years, the easier the application will be. The application for Social Security is definitely daunting. It can feel like this is this is just I feel like I'm going to climb a mountain. It is a lot of paperwork. It's a lot of time um, depending on who your lawyer is. I mean my, my the lawyer firm that I used they did most of it for me but I still had to answer all the questions. They did the writing it down but I had to. It's a lot. It, it's hours and hours and hours of getting the information, getting it down, trying to make sure you remember everything, filling it out as completely as you can because everything matters. Sjogren's patients don't always want to apply for a disability, but when the disease causes them the inability to work and or provide for their family, it may be time to consider applying. I was a single parent of two teenage daughters. Um, I had a career that demanded a lot of me. I worked with special needs kids. I, I was a reading specialist. I taught a class for struggling readers. It required a lot of my internal energy. And I got to the point where I was coming home after work and going to bed just so I could get up and go to work the next day. And it was hard. It was really hard. And I started getting to this cycle of, you know, missing a day at work and then feeling bad and stressing and then I'd miss more work. Often with chronic illnesses and illnesses that are progressive in nature and that tend to worsen over time. You can see that in a person's work history. You can see it in the amount of time they've had to take off, mm -hmm. uh, paid time off, sick leave, often FMLA leave, Family Medical Leave Act leave is taken every year by people with illness. I've certainly represented people who have just strung it along as long as they possibly could with an employer. Receiving benefits from Social Security Disability is not a sure thing. Patients sometimes must file numerous appeals before obtaining benefits. Approval rates vary by state. One of the things that I should be clear about is that at the initial application level and then at reconsideration, there is no face-to-face -face review by anyone. This is all done by people who never see you. They just review your records and they are employees of the state in which you live under contract with the Social Security Administration. So it's actually a state agency making that determination. The allowance rates vary by state and they vary fairly widely across the United States. In some states they can be as high as 50 or even 60 percent, in other states they're as low as 20 percent. Uh, there's a wide variation there. I got it first time up mm -hmm. and that is extremely unusual, extremely unusual. And basically they said it was because you had a, a medical file this thick and all, you know, you had it all in one place. If the person is denied on the application, which happens to far too many people who really have serious disabilities, then they have to enter an appeal process, <clears throat> which can be quite lengthy. Uh, another level called reconsideration has to be requested. If that's denied, then you have to request a hearing before a social security judge called an administrative law judge. And that's where you actually have a face-to-face -face hearing with the person who's going to decide your claim. Uh, and those are critical proceedings uh, that I represent clients in all the time. Receiving Social Security disability benefits does not fully replace your salary, but it can help when working is not an option. There is a formula. It's certainly not a full salary. This does not replace the income that mm -hmm. you made uh, in, the, in the labor force. Um, the amount paid by SSD, Social Security Disability, is a formula that's determined by how many years you've worked, how much you've made, what you've paid into the system. So that varies by the individual. Social Security has that. That limit is in the neighborhood of $3,000 more or less. Not everyone that applies for Social Security Disability hires an attorney, but having someone experienced with the process can help patients be more successful. I hired a, a nationwide disability firm who had an office in King of Prussia near me. 
Uh, I had a caseworker assigned to me. I knew the best way to go was with a disability lawyer or firm. Based on my 30 years of experience working in this area, I don't think Social Security looks askance at people who apply from the beginning with an attorney representing them. I don't think Social Security thinks, oh, this person doesn't have a strong claim. Mm -hmm. So they feel they need to have an attorney to represent them. And you're only paying an attorney in this area of the law because it's very strictly regulated uh, by the statute and the regulations of Social Security. You're not paying an attorney a fee unless you win the case. Uh, it is contingent on the attorney actually winning the case to receive any fee at all, and the fee is limited always to no more than 25% of the retroactive benefits that the individual receives from Social Security. Patients don't want to stop working nor being productive, but sometimes, because of the seriousness of their illness, working is just not an option. And I have the work ethic, and I loved my job. I loved teaching. The only thing I loved more was my children. And losing that was, that was crushing. It was crushing. It was, I still miss the classroom, and I've been out of it a long time. Admitting you are disabled from Sjogren's can be hard to accept, but you aren't alone. There are many patients who qualify along with you for social security disability, and that is why the program was invented, to help those that qualify and need it. For more information about disability, as well as to find our network of support groups, please visit Sjogren's.org. Thank you for joining us today on Exploring Sjogren's. <laughs>